The Game Boy Advance from 2002 supports an impressive graphical set for a machine of its time. The time of Dave Marina's freestyle BMX 2 on the PlayStation 2. And it even supports what is a seemingly impressive lighting effect. However, as you know, the GBA does not have an RTX card in it. So what dark rituals are taking place to render this lighting? The GBA has six different kinds of rendering modes. I'll be going over how, how it's often achieved in tile mode. The most common rendering mode, it's used in games like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Red Rescue Team, and even including Trails Hero Fair, even A Link to the Past, and also if you already know how tile mode works, you should probably skip to this timestamp. Tile mode works by loading a set of 8x8 tiles into the GBA's video memory, then only rendering those tiles on the screen. We have access to four background layers, and we should treat each layer as a grid, where every single square we tell it which tile it should render. To control which background layer will draw on top of another background layer, we set the priority attribute. And this attribute has no bearing on what number background layer it is. The, the second part of the rendering puzzle is objects. Now objects are what we would think of as moving elements on the screen. So the way we tell an object which tile it should use is the same way we would tell a single Square in a background layer, but objects don't all have to be the same size. So we need to point it at the first tile in the sequence and we need to make sure that the other tiles are adjacent to that first tile because it will just go, okay, first one, second one, third one, and create a sprite. I mean the object. Even like background layers, we can give objects specific prior priorities meaning that we can layer them on top of each other or even in between background layers. Now, how is this lighting effect created? By using the blend register. Thanks for watching. The blend register lets us specify a top and a bottom. Now don't get these mixed up with the background layering. This is completely separate. All this lets us specify is for the color blending, which, lay which layers slash objects we want to be on the top and on the bottom of the color blending. Using this effect, we can darken the screen by making a dark background and assigning it to the top blending layer. Then assigning the layers which we want to darken to the bottom layer. Now we assign a weight to the top and the bottom blending layers. As you can see, this is darkened bottom layers. This isn't lighting, we're just making everything darker. What we need to do is we need to get the background darkening layer and we need to select the area which we want to light up and we didn't make it the transparent color. What this will do is instead of making it darker, it will just make it nothing because there's no color there because it's the transparent coloring layer. Now you have to remember, this is completely separate from how the blending register works. And I'm not going to go into it because it's too weird. Now that area is lit up. Let there be light. This looks like hot garbage. It goes from dark to bright. We need a transition between the darkest point and the brightest point. So how, how do we do that? We need to make transition pixels between the darkest point and it gets progressively lighter until we get to the transparent color. This gives a nice aura of lighting effect. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. However, this is meant to be played on a Game Boy Advance. You're not meant to be able to count the pixels um, in a zoomed in frame from a video. If we look at Wario Land 4, you can see this effect in a real GBA game. Here is a light. If we disable the background layer for which 
darkens the screen, it suddenly all lights up. You'll also notice they use purple for the dark hole as opposed to black like I did for my demo, which works better in some instances, especially for the transition. Uh, that's it.